Introducing the space buggy. Wait, watch out for the camera. No! Hello guys, I'm Orbiter, you Welsh engineer, and welcome to the Large Space Station, part two, science edition. And yes, in this episode, or whatever we're to call it, we're going to be putting science modules on the Large Space Station. Now, I decided to do this because science is quite important, not only in the development of rockets and space travel technology, but in earthly science as well, like weather, satellites and whatnot. But we're talking about, I suppose we're talking about uh, science on the International Space Station, because that is major, major work being done on there. For example, they cut flatworms <laughs> on the space station, and you're wondering what the hell is that about? Well, flatworms can heal. They regenerate their limbs or heads or whatever they got. I suppose it's just a worm in it at the end of the day. And then they, you know, grow it back. But they help us, they give us the key to study cell regeneration within a weightless environment. Especially if we're going to send astronauts to Mars, we need to know things like that. But anyway, let's talk about what we've got launching up here. We've got the escape module. Someone said, someone in the comments told me to... Um, who was it? Kolebian Borsteinson Vlogs. He said to add an emergency, emergency shuttle. Well, I didn't think an emergency shuttle would be best. It might look awesome, Doctor the Space Station, but an escape pod would be a bit quicker. We can ch chuck all the Kerbals in that escape pod there and in the top capsule and return them safely. And now that we've launched it up into orbit, we need to get our intercept, which is easy enough. Just raise the altitude, move the uh, maneuver node around into the get you close intercept points, and then if finagle it, prograde, retrograde, normal, anti-normal, which is up and down, until you get the close as you can. I normally like to get about between 3.5 to naught kilometers. <laughs> Most of the times I get about three kilometers, and once you do your burns, if especially if you do it manually, you sometimes get a bit of variation. This is where RCS come in handy, because if you have RCS on your rocket or wherever it is, you can use that to uh, do the small adjustments to get your closest approach. Anyway, here we are. We've got our closest approach, 2.6 kilometers. That's not too bad. Now let's go burning towards it to ready for docking. Now I said I'd read out some comments, not all comments, so don't get your hopes up, but good comments. And I've got one excellent comment in the last video from Walking Raven Heart. He says, the aerospace program has kicked out a great many byproduct technologies we've been able to enjoy in daily, everyday life. Velcro, Teflon, vacuum sealing, leftover containers. <laughs> And those $20 fountain pens that with pressurized reservoirs. Photovoltaic panel cells, which is solar panels, computers, and too many more to name. I hope your station goes up well. I've been catching up with Curl Quest and greatly enjoy the series tale as it unfolds. Ooh, you'll enjoy the new Kerbal Quest then. Especially the next episode, which is coming out. Oh, it should be out by the time you see this, so yeah, hope you enjoy that. Anyway, let's get back to this because he pointed out computers in that as we are docking our escape module. And why I mention computers is because it seems that uh, the space worm didn't create computers, but what they did do was resolution revolutionize shrinking of computers. Because if you think about it, the less you need to get into orbit, it takes quite a lot of fuel. So every pound of payload would mean that you have to have 10 pounds of fuel, let's say. As just a guesstimation, it's not really, really probably. Or one kilogram, let's say, takes four kilograms to launch up into orbit. So then reducing the size of everything, including the smallest parts, the bolts even, probably, you know, something small but strong would be handy. Make it, making the rocket a lot lighter. And that's what they did with the computers. They made a guidance system, they shrunk everything down to make the guidance system smaller, and then they discovered, well they didn't discover, 
they realized that um, silicon transistors making ICs would be a lot easier, a lot smaller. You could, you know, pro basically wire them up to do whatever you want or program them in later dates. So NASA ordered loads of them. I think they ordered a surplus, which kicked off the resolution revolution of semiconductor computers, which was cool, which basically meant that things got smaller. So the smartphone in your pocket is possibly a byproduct or partly a byproduct of the space program. So you have that to thank for that big, huge thing in your pocket, which most of that is built, made up of uh, the battery, I suppose, and the screen. That's the only limiting size factors to the, to the mobile phone. But yes, you know, like solar panels, solar panels were developed. I'm not sure if it were initially developed for the space program, but they were improved for the space program. Because, you know, sending batteries up, you know, batteries weigh a lot, but solar panels wouldn't be so bad. You could add them on there to power your spacecraft in almost indefinitely. Where the batteries would basically run out at time and degrade. But anyway, now we have our science station. And one of those modules actually isn't a science station. It's just a fuel, empty fuel tank. And I put indicator lights on it. And you use the tweak scale mod to make those lights a bit bigger. You can see them, the, the white ones are the bottom module. Anyway, let's deorbit that and launch something else up. I can't remember what this was. And I, I just edited this video, which is tough to me. I think I know what it is. Uh, it was at the beginning of the video, so you know what it is then. <laughs> I've got that to come. Anyway, as we're launching this app, I suppose the next thing we can do is read out some more comments. Which, from RoboDragon222. History lessons with Orbiter. Yes, here we go again. <laughs> and now we're coming to dock the mysterious device here. And oh my god, I misjudged this. I came in too quickly. And I had you was using Smart SAS for MechJeb, which if you set it to go in a direction and you cancel out, say like you're going to uh, relative velocity to the space station and you change that velocity, it'll change the direction of it. It's not like the SAS on the game, the standard stock SAS, I suppose you call it, where it, you know, once you've ch killed your velocity, it'll switch to just kill rotation. But yeah, that took a bit of an eagle. But however, docking, I, f I find docking quite easy in this game now. <laughs> as I say, as I miss the docking port again. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I should put docking alignment tool. That is one thing that should be stuck in this game. Because the only thing that I'm missing here is not the the location of the port or my direction, because that's on the nav ball, but the direction that the both ports are pointing. If you had some way of lining them, that'd be awesome. Anyway, let's get Valentina as I decided into the space buggy. And <laughs> get her on the way. Uh Come on, go, move, move! And I realize, oh dear, the command seat in itself is not able to control that, the moon buggy, uh, the space buggy. So what we're gonna have to do here is we get Bill out with his awesome engineering skills. We'll take the Megjep unit off the escape capsule because we don't really need her on there. Attach it to the space buggy. Let's put Bill back in because we know what woman drivers are like. No, I'm only joking. Anyway, Valentina is going to take a trek around to the space station. The idea was this, that you've got the container on the back. You can put stuff in there. You can, you know, take equipment around and we'll basically fix anything. That's one thing I think is missing from the space station. It's like a little buggy the astronauts can go on. But I suppose they're always scared of losing the astronaut into space. Oh, by the way, docking this is a lot harder. Especially when the space station is twirling around. This is four times speed, so it didn't seem like it's twirling that much to me. Now that is done. Let's have a look at another comment, shall we? From Jonathan Toy. Add docking bay at the, to the station and make a car. 
shuttle like Matt Lowe. I watched somebody land from space and he went down a mountain. It was awesome. No parts were lost. The car didn't even flip. Yes, he landed a car like that. Try your own take on it. And I think I saw that video quite a while ago, but that was awesome. He deorbited the car. He went down the ramp and no, he went down a mountainside. But the curvature of that mountain must have been good enough that the car came to you know level playing fields and it slowed down. I'm not sure if I could be able to do that. That would take a lot of effort. But anyway, the last thing to do here for our space station is to detach that because I've got to add a decoupling module to that. Or decoupler. So we use Bill again to do that. Deorbit that. And look at this. This is another bit of science that uh They've been doing on the International Space Station micro satellites. And I told you that I'm using tweak scale, and that's what I did with this. Tweak scaled everything the RCS ports, the main probe, the solar panels, and I didn't realize it, but yeah, I should have extended the solar panels before I knocked it. And I must have been. I didn't disable RCS on this, so it's used all the fuel. Ah. Oh. It's the things you learn after you do it. So yeah, it's a bit cheating on by your... <laughs> yep, monopropellant. And the problem is with this thing, it does not move so much. And I'm clicking everything, moving everything around. It does work, but really slowly. Anyway, this is a quick addition of uh, the large space station. As I said, I'm going to keep these short. Not many comments are going to be read for a bit of information and space station building. If you like this video, crank that like button like an engineer. And as always, if you want to see more, subscribe and let me know in the comments. I'm Orbiter, trust me, I'm an engineer. Man, those satellites are so cute. <laughs>